hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle and a review of how to map the loss distribution to a required credit enhancement for FRM candidates. I continue to review material that's in the assigned reading on subprime securitization by Adam Ashcraft of the New York Fed. And our goal here is to determine or to calibrate the level of credit enhancement that is required for a particular tranche in a securitization. Let me remind that credit enhancement is the buffer that absorbs the credit losses so that the tranche can earn the rating that it deserves. And we have two basic steps here. One is to specify the loss distribution, and the second is to map this loss distribution based on a target rating. And readers of the case study will recognize that among the many problems in subprime securitization, this exercise here is yet another weak link. It presents tremendous model risk that clearly the credit agencies didn't quite cope with in the subprime securitization. Nevertheless, we'll look at the approach. And so first we want to specify the loss distribution. That's illustrated right here, and the numbers are right here. I won't go into the math behind the distribution because we can substitute really any number of distributions in here. I'll upload the spreadsheet if you'd like to take a closer look. I've done here just about the simplest thing I could do, which is to use the Gaussian Coppola. This method is reviewed by John Hull in his chapter on credit derivatives. But here we assume there's a credit portfolio. And I'm going to assume every credit or obligor in the portfolio has the same probability default of 5%. And then we'll assume there's a default correlation between the credits in the portfolio of 0.05. Technically, that's a Coppola correlation, but it's sometimes called a default correlation. Given that, I can use a Coppola approach to specify the loss distribution. And again, this is not a defense this is in no way a defense of using that simplistic Coppola approach to do that. It's just a way to generate the loss distribution. And what the blue line here means is that for a particular significance level, we have a corresponding credit enhancement. So, for example, up here at the top, that's this first row, 99.9 .9 significance corresponds to 0.1% confidence. And this up here at the top means we are only 0.1% confident. That means we're not confident at all that the losses in the portfolio won't exceed 0.8%. See how we can have almost no confidence that the losses will be that small. So we move down the distribution down here and we move down the number, the corresponding numbers here. I hid most of the rows here in between because I've got, I've got a whole sequence of numbers here, many, many rows in between. I've hidden those and skipped right to the bottom at 1%. So here at 1%, that's somewhere right about here down to the bottom of this distribution. That's 1% significance or, actually it's right about here, what that means is under, this, under these assumptions and this simplistic Coppola model, we're going to say we are 99% confident that losses in the portfolio won't exceed 12.4%. See how if we want to be more and more confident, this x-axis needs to move out to the right more. Because we can only, if we want to say with certainty, well with certainty we need to be somewhere over here really at 100%. So that's the meaning of the loss distribution. And you can see here right away, there's tremendous model risk. I can change this default correlation and this will change. I've made a highly simplistic assumption that all of the defaults are the same. I, it would be, it's very hard in practice, I think, to defend this particular Coppola model approach to the realistic scenario of defaults. But nevertheless, we've got the loss distribution. And now we can go to the second step, which is to map a target rating to the implied credit enhancement. Because if this distribution is accurate, then, well, we know what to do, really. And I need one more set of assumptions, and that is I, want, I need to link or associate a target credit rating with a probability of default, or more specifically in this case, a cumulative probability of default. And again, I made these numbers up. 
I did loosely pull them from five to ten year cumulative probability of default rates. But nevertheless, we know, we know directionally we need to have low probability of defaults for high ratings. So here in my assumption, I've got a triple A rating uh, linked to a probability of default of only 0.1%. In other words, what we're saying here is if we want the tranche to earn a triple A rating, we need to genuinely have a cumulative probability of default of only 0.1%. If our probability of default is higher than that, of 1%, then we own, the tranche only earns a rating of single A. And so you can see, and so it goes. I don't know if the lower levels of these are accurate, but I said 40% probably default only earns you a single B. So that's the set of assumptions. And now given the loss distribution, we can do the second step. We can take a target rating and map it to the implied credit enhancement that is required. So let me, let's just assume that I would like the tranche to earn a credit rating of triple B. That means, according to this table, I need the probability of default of that tranche to be 7% or less. And so given our loss distribution, I would, I would, could move down this distribution until I get to 7%, and that happens to be this green dot right here, and it, if I look up 7% and then look down, I would get the credit enhancement of 8.87%. And so it's sort of helpful to think about coming down from the bottom, I think, because if I start up here, here I'm at a probability of default of 40%. That's too high. That's not gonna earn me triple B. Probability of 20%, too high, not going to earn me a triple B. I need to get down here until I reach 7%. Okay, I got the tranche down to a 7% probability default. That means I need a credit enhancement of 8.87%. If I want to earn a better rating, if I want a double A, well, I need to move, or let me say a single A, I need to move down further until I get to 1% probability of default. That's here. That implies a credit enhancement of 12.43%. So you can see I can, I can even just take these rows out here just to isolate on that triple B, which is 7%. And if that probability default, if I just changed it to 4%, then the required credit enhancement moves up almost to 10%. And so if I can support this tranche with the almost 10% credit enhancement, given this loss distribution, that implies a probability default of 4%, and I've earned the target rating of triple B. And so that's the two-step process implied in this exercise. I'll post the spreadsheet up if you to this website if you'd like to take a closer look. This is David Harper of the Bonnock Turtle. Thanks for your time.